OK, this is Handbrake for the Mac, and it's used for getting files, say, from a DVD onto your computer so that you can watch them on devices such as iPods, iPhones, iPod Touches, iPhone 4s, iPads, Apple TVs, Apple TV TV2s, and some other devices as well. Now, what happens is you put in a DVD, and if you put one in, it normally starts up your DVD player and what you want to do is quit that because if you've got that running at exactly the same time as Handbrake, it's going to be trying to do two jobs at once, which is going to confuse things and really slow things down. Handbrake's available from handbrake.fr. Download the Mac version. If you've got a recent Mac, you can download the 64-bit version. If not, you'll need the 32-bit version. If you're not sure, go with the 32-bit version. If you try the 64-bit and it doesn't load, then go with the 32-bit version. One of the things I do need to tell you is that if you do take your files from a DVD, like a commercial DVD, like such as a movie, and put them onto your Mac or other device. In some places that is still considered illegal, but things are changing, so keep a look out for that. In some countries it's okay to keep using them for personal use, but if you distribute them, that is clearly piracy, which is illegal. So don't do that. Now, when I started Handbrake, if I already had a DVD in here, it would start up with a dialog box asking me to choose which file to use or disk. I cleared that window, because what you can also do is go to source, click on here in the top left corner, and what you'll see is it opens up the same dialog box and there is my drive, and you'll see it's got a little picture of what is a CD or DVD. I simply choose that, and I don't need to worry about choosing any of the folders there. Click on open, and it's gonna scan the disk to see what's on there. And you can see at the top there it's saying scanning movie source, and it's looking to see what titles there are. For some reason, when it's done this recording, although I've only got two, it's telling me that I've got six on there. So some of these are going to be duplicates. There's the titles, and you can see that it's showing four on that list. And you can choose the ones you want, and you can then have a look in preview to see which one is the correct one. And you can see it's showing me a picture of one of the scenes in there. You can scrub through it to see more. If I choose another title, again, I can click on the preview window and as you can see immediately, I can see that it's a different scene. So I'm going to go back to title one. What you'll see is it's showing you what duration it is there as well on the title. If you're taking it off a DVD that's a movie, then you're looking for the one that will probably be the longest title. So that's normally the case and that's the one you need to select. Now what I could do is choose all my settings and then click on start. But I've got more than two things that I want to encode, so what I'm going to do is actually queue them up and then be able to run the whole queue with all those settings. But I've chosen my title. What I'm going to do is have a look at what angles I've got, and you'll see there's only one angle because angles are used on multi-camera DVDs where you can choose what uh, camera you want to have a look at. Not that common, but you can also choose what chapters you want to select. So you can either get the whole DVD, this one's got one through to six chapters, or if I want to, I could choose from chapter two up to chapter four. So you can choose exactly what you want. You can also choose it to pick out by seconds. So I could choose to get from 30 seconds through to say 60 seconds. Or what I could do is actually, if I know the frames that I want, I can choose what frame number through to what other frame number I want. I'm going to change this now. I'm going to give this a file name for this particular one, for title one. I'm going to call it first video and that's going to go into my movies folder and then in a subfolder called handbrake. I can then click on browse and it will pop up with the dialog box and I can choose where I want to put it but I'm going to keep it exactly where it is. Now I'm going to encode this so that it works on an iPhone 4. If it works on an iPhone 4 it also works on your computer, iPad 2 and also the original iPad as well and I believe it also works on Apple TV. You have other presets there as well, just choose the one you want. Universal is good for using it on the most modern, up-to-date devices, which will work on the latest iPods, iPads, and also on your computer. And if I choose iPhone 4, then what will happen is, as you expect, it will put all of the settings in there for you automatically that are correct for an iPhone 4 and you'll see that it's put it in good quality there. It's got the MP4 file, it's put all the tick boxes in there, it's chosen the right codec, 
Now one thing I might just want to change here is the frame rate. I happen to know that it's PAL, which is 25 frames per second, so I can change that as well. That probably wouldn't make too much difference, but probably a good idea to choose that anyway. If you don't know, just leave it as it is with the one that it actually selects. And you'll find that places such as Australia and some others use the PAL format at 25 frames per second. In the US, it's NTSC 29.97. But generally, you don't have to worry too much by choosing those presets there. If you click on audio, what you'll see, it's got the different soundtracks there. This would be as if you had different languages, you could choose what language you wanted, but in this case, there is only one. Same for subtitles, if you had different languages, or even for harder hearing, you could choose it there. In the advanced section, just leave all of those alone. And in the chapter section, you could actually go in there and actually change the name of the chapters. Now, the names of the chapters appear on some of these devices when you're playing it on the Mac or on the iPhone, iPod, iPad, and so on. You'll actually see the chapters there. So you can go through and change the names if you prefer to have different names if you want particular sections highlighted. So really, you don't need to change too much because really by clicking on that preset, it's done it all for you. Now, one thing that I do set here is I click on the picture settings because in there if you've got something that is high action you need to change it and what I do here is I go to the filter section and I turn on this deinterlace right here then I just click on this drop down box and depending on what you actually choose here will depend on the quality of how well it does the deinterlacing. If you go for the slowest one, such as slower, it does better quality. Now deinterlace is meant to reduce the quality a bit, but to be quite honest, I don't really notice on these devices. And one thing you'll note is if you actually do have something that needs deinterlacing, when it's panning left and right, you'll see jagged lines around the edges. Now I'm gonna click on add to queue. It's gonna take this one, add it to the queue, because I actually want to add the second recording as well which is the second title I click on it if you were using the Windows version if you've seen that then that would come up with a Windows showing you what's actually in the queue and you could close that queue and then go back do all your other settings like we're about to do and then add that as well but in the Mac version that box doesn't pop up so we're just going to go through change all our settings here so I'm just going to put in second video we're not changing all of the settings I'm simply going to make sure that the same settings are selected so I'm going to click on iPhone 4 again and that way you'll see it's chosen the frame weight again. So I'm going to go and click on that and I'm going to change that to 25 again. And everything else should really have stayed the same. I'm not really going to bother with changing any of those. I'm going to check in the picture settings to make sure the deinterlacing is on and it's not. So I'm going to choose that. And again, I'm going to go for the slower option. So all of my settings, all the main settings that I want have now been done. There are more, but to be quite honest, with all these presets, they're great. You don't need to do too much. So now I'm going to click on Add to Queue. Both of them are in the queue. Now what else I could do is I could go in and with the same title, I might want to do this for, say, an Apple TV. I could do those settings and again add that to the queue as well and build up the queue for all sorts of different devices. Clicking on Show Queue brings up the dialog box. I can see the settings in there. I know they're correct if I just wanted to actually check to make sure that they're okay, but using the presets, I know they're going to be fine. I then click on start to start the encoding, and what you'll see is it's going to start any moment now, and you can see just in a second, it's gonna say that it's scanning the file, and it's showing you how long it thinks it's gonna take. It's gonna take a while just to settle down and show me. Down at the bottom, it's showing you there as well. And you'll see here, it's estimating it's taking 35 minutes at the moment, but you'll see that's going to change the time will probably go up a bit here. So, and you can see it is actually going up in a moment, it will actually give me a more accurate reading, but it can actually suddenly speed up. It all depends on the content that's actually in there. So just keep an eye on that one. Just go away, leave it. You can be working on other things. And what will then happen is if you're doing anything that's really intensive, it could actually slow handbrake down quite a bit. So. That is Handbrake for the Mac. There is also a tutorial Handbrake for Windows. Go and check that out if you've got a Windows version.